This is a Sunny Money SM100 solar light, and it's described as the world's most affordable solar light. And the main targeted market for this is um, developing countries where they don't have a power grid, but they have plenty of sunshine. And you can buy this uh, in the UK. It's designed in, uh, by a company in the UK, manufactured in China, and then shipped to the developing countries. But I got it from solar-aid.org. And it cost about £10, but of that £10, because I'm a wealthy Westerner, so to speak, of that money, when I buy one, a portion of the money raised on that website then goes to shipping these across to places that can, you know, make a lot more use out of them. So um, it comes with a base, a very simple metal base, I'll just pull this off. That uh, in my instance, I just uh, I used it outside, just tilted up an angle like that to charge. But when you turn it on, uh, it then doubles up as a sort of basically a desk stand. Very simple sort of frame. It's also got some uh, slots for it, which I'm guessing is for a headband or something. Um, the unit has a typical, a, a fairly good quality, a well-packed uh, silicon panel in the back with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections of the silicon panel, suggesting this might not be a nickel metal hydride cell. It may actually be a small lithium cell. Um, small circuit board in there, and it, it doesn't have dusk sensing like a garden light. It's strictly when you need it, you turn it on and off with this button, and you just charge it during the day in the sunshine. It comes with this little slip at the bottom. Does it have anything information on it? Sunny money, Yingli Solar. Save money with free energy from the sun. Water resistant, do not submerge in water. Mm, wonder if it's got a seal. Keep your light clean, charge light every day. Do not place near fire or hot surface. More study time, high quality light, save money, healthier than kerosene, safe and clean. Okay, that's reasonable enough. And uh, it's got pictures of lots of worthy African kids with their solar lights. I have to say it would be a great toy, wouldn't it? For a kid to have a solar light like this. So uh, let's take a look inside it. The screws that hold it together are not... Crosshead, what are they? They look like Torx. Could be hex, I think they may be Torx though. Okay, right here. A uh, screwdriver set. I'm gonna have to crack out the high-tech screwdriver set with lots of bits. So let's uh, start with one of the smaller ones because they're quite small. Not way too small. Uh, how about this one? Perfect fit. Excellent. Let's explore this. In the past, I've been approached by people with grand ideas to send solar lights to orphans in Africa. And apart from being slightly condescending, the very concept of that, um, they gen their business plan generally involved me doing all the work and buying all the materials and them taking all the credit for it, which... Uh, wasn't a great thing, but in this instance, it's a, a British company has basically got everything together and actually done it, which is nice. Right, I think those uh, screws are relatively captive, so let's uh, start getting this to bits as it clipped together. It feels quite rigid. It's got a seal, that's a good start. Okay. Ah. It's got a lithium cell, uh, 14,500, that means 40 millimetres diameter by 50 millimetres long. And it says, uh, as opposed to the normal cells, let's just zoom in just a tiny little bit here. As opposed to the normal cells, which are about 3.6 volts, this one says 3.2 volts. That suggests it's a lithium iron phosphate cell. And the capacity is 300 milliamp power, which might not sound that much, but for a small solar light like this, that's going to give plenty of time, uh, illumination time, and it stands a good chance the battery's going to be fully charged. I wonder if it's got charge protection circuitry uh, from the sun during the day. Um, other advantages, the lithium iron phosphate cells, they are a, a more stable chemistry than uh, the more volatile ones we're used to, lithium cells. And they've got other advantages. Although 
for the same volume, the energy density tends to be lower than standard lithium. The stability is a lot greater and they'll withstand many, many more charge discharge cycles and also keep their capacity over a longer period of time than traditional lithium cells. So let's uh, pop this out. So that's a good start, that's a good choice. That'll be why the solar panel is, uh, oh, the solar panel is uh, well sealed in, isn't it? It's got a set of rubbery cement here that's holding that in, sealing it right round. That's quite good. So let's get the circuit board out. So one central LED. Uh, an 8-pin chip. Uh, oh, this has also incidentally got a little green LED in it. Let's see if we can get that to light. Uh, yeah, you can see it lighting. And it just lights when it's charging. It doesn't have a sort of, it doesn't have the sort of red-green indicator to show when it's uh, fully charged. The chip is a YX8182. YX8182. Uh, YX make the solar garden light chips. Uh, we get the button. Not much else. Just a couple of resistors, the LED, which I wouldn't expect much more with these chips because they tend to integrate everything. So um, let's. Uh, I'm going to go and get see if I can find the data sheet for that chip and sort of reverse engineer this, and we'll see what the circuitry is like. So that's it, uh, reverse engineered. I did find the data sheet in Chinese, but that's what we're kind of used to, isn't it, really? Uh, in Chinese, I did the translation. You know, on Google, when you search for this, you, it offers the option to translate the page, and it'll also translate the PDFs. But when it translates them, um, it does a modest job translating them, but it doesn't include the diagrams, and it also won't print out. So I had to sort of just make mental notes about things uh, of these chips. So it gives a couple of... Uh, Typical application notes. Um, and this is more or less following one of them. So if I just uh, zoom out a little bit, is this glaringly bright? I don't think it's too bad, is it? It could be too. I'm going to tame this down just a little bit. There we go. The main difference is, and something that really caught me out first when I was uh, doing this, there's an enable input in this, and normally you switch the enable input to the positive connection of the battery. You basically take it high to turn it on. And there was an extra resistor, which was kind of between the positive and the switch. Let me get a pen and doodle that. It's as if there was a resistor across the switch. And I was trying to work out why they're doing that. Initially, I thought maybe it's a sort of fairly linear circuit inside and they were just wanting to make it glow slightly when it was off, but uh, it's not that. The reason they've done it that way is that this, it's not across the switch at all. The resistor, which is quite high value, 27K, is a pull-up resistor. Because this is designed to turn it on when it's uh, pulled high by the switch, what they're doing is they're pulling the uh, pin high via that resistor, and the switch is actually going to ground. And the reason they did that is purely because of the circuit board layout, to keep it as simple as possible. Big chunky tracks, single-sided board, they've simply uh, referenced the switch. The switch is basically pulling that pin to ground, and when the switch is off, that's when it turns on because the voltage floats up with that pull-up resistor. Other things worth of noting. Uh, they didn't use the, the sort of coupling capacitor, which is a bit naughty, but that's okay. They've put a, a resistor 1K and an LED, the green LED, across the solar panel just so it lights when uh, the thing is charging. The input, this uh, does have the facility to add a cadmium sulfide photocell. They've not used that because this is a solar garden light type arrangement. Another option, you can put a resistor across here and sense the voltage on the uh, solar panel so it can use that to actually turn it on and off. So you could, technically speaking, by soldering a little resistor on with very fine connections, you could convert that into a set of garden light if you wanted. Keep in mind it's not super waterproof because I also noticed that although there's a sort of seal, rubbery seal around the it, oh, blimey, it's, oh, it's just pinged off. So a silicony seal around the edge, it doesn't cover these internal slotted bits, although they make quite a tight fit to the case. Uh, so it is water resilient, but it's not waterproof, but then it does say that, so that's 
you know, that's not anything bad. This is an interesting pin, the mode pin, because if you connect it to uh, the ground, they show a switch in the schematic. That's not in use in this place. It's actually linked to the battery positive in this case. Now, there's two things you can do with that mode switch. You can either have it linked to ground, uh, or you can leave it floating, or you can connect it to the battery positive. If you link it to ground, it will set a charge voltage of 4.2 volt in the lithium cell. So that's for standard lithium cells. If you leave it floating or tie it to the positive rail, as they've done, it sets a voltage of uh, the upper range of the lithium iron phosphate, which is completely defeating me at the moment. It's well below 4.2 volts, uh, and it, set, it changes it for that. So the battery protection is built into this, the charging. There is a, a send resistor here, which had a value of 1.8 ohms, and that is used with a reference voltage inside of about 90 millivolts to set the current through the LED. So whatever, if you want a higher current, you use a lower value resistor. Uh, and if you want lower current, you use a higher value resistor. And it means that as soon as the voltage across that resistor reaches 90 millivolts, uh, it will cap the current at that level. And in this case, uh, that equates to dead on 50 milliamps. I can test that. I can test that right now. Bring in the little uh, meter that has seen quite a lot of screen time recently because uh, it's actually quite good, this little meter. I'm liking it. I like the fact it's got the DC current clamp. It's uh, a very cable little meter. So let's turn that on. Let's zero it out. Let's... Uh, 42 milliamps, 43 milliamps. Okay. It's certainly going in the direction of the 50 milliamps. Oh, hold on, let's uh, zero that out again. Yeah, about, say, 45 milliamps. That's reasonable enough. For that LED, that's absolutely fine. It's a good compromise between intensity and sort of lifespan of the LED and also uh, the sort of runtime we're going to get off that battery. I also notice it's got quite fat tracks in that as well. Are they visible there? Yeah, modestly fat tracks to help take the heat away from the LED. Um, anything else worth noting about the circuit? That is more or less it. It's a very straightforward circuit. It's a very straightforward, simple design for the light, and it's very functional. I particularly like uh, the fact it is quite robust looking. Uh, it's strictly, as I say, it's a strictly functional light. It's not got too many frills and things. Uh, and it's got the lithium iron phosphate cell, which is very good. It's a good choice. So yeah, this looks quite a nice little light. I could see these being very useful, particularly in countries that don't have, uh, you know, a power distribution network. And kids, that part the I'll add a link to the Facebook page because it shows like pictures of like classrooms full of the kids where they've all been given these and this would be a great toy for a kid uh, particularly in those countries because it would just be their own personal little source of light and uh, much safer than the kerosene or candles um, and you know you could imagine them just uh, at night time just snuggling under the covers with a good book and uh, reading it with the help of this light yeah I think this is quite a good design I quite like it